Hey guys, welcome back. Um, we're going to start changing the fuel injectors on my Ford Ranger. But the first thing we have to do is we have to take the uh, air intake tube off. So let me show you what's involved in that. Okay, so it starts off here with our air cleaner box. Then we have this part which is called a mass airflow sensor. Air intake tube. We're going to have to remove this, which is a tube that vents uh, crankcase vapors. So where our rocker arms and everything are, sometimes it can build up pressure. We wind up sucking it into our air, take, in, air intake tube. And then we have a clamp where it winds up meeting our throttle body. Let's talk a little bit about this mass airflow sensor for a second though. So our computer, to control fuel injection, it needs to know three things from the sensor. How much air is flowing through it. Another one is the temperature of the air. And the third thing that's in this sensor is a barometer telling us our pressure. All right, so let's start off with our air filter. It has a little clip right there that I just undid. And then there should be another one over here, which I take off. Then I have to unplug my mass airflow sensor, but sometimes they have this little red clip. You pull the clip, you squeeze the clamp, And the connector comes off. Now this connector is a little tricky too. It has this little lever here that you have to pull. It's hard to do this with the camera in my hand, so let me put the camera down. So if you look, if you move that, it opens it up and allows it to release. Now the only other thing we have to take off is this bolt right here. Let me put you on top of the battery. Alright. And what is that? That's an eight millimeter. It's bolted to our throttle body. So let me take that off. Now the other thing I see about this connect connector here, or this fastener, I see a lot of kids, they see because it's got a little flat blade spot, they always want to go at it with a screwdriver, but meanwhile the outside is an 8 millimeter. it's a lot easier to get six points on it than, than a, a flat head. Alright, so now it's just a matter of me pulling on this tube. And my whole assembly comes out. So I got my whole assembly and air filter. Alright guys, see you in part two. Okay guys, part two. So now what we're going to do is we're going to wind up taking our upper intake manifold off. or they call, Some people call it a plenum. But we have to take a couple more uh, fuel injection uh, devices off. So the first one we're going to take off, which is an output called a idle air control valve so this uh, controls how much air is going in at idle and we got to disconnect what's called our throttle position sensor this one tells our computer what position that plate is right there I don't know if you can see inside there but we have a throttle plate Let's see if I can get it to open slightly a little bit alright so to get these off I have to squeeze so I'm going to push down and pull off same thing with here Squeeze and pull off. So those are two, they're now off. So to take my intake off, I'm gonna have to take that bolt off and all those bolts over here. So those are eight millimeters. So let me start doing that. So this cover is going to be the cover that uh, covers our throttle linkage. I'll show you that in a second. So I got a couple cables and springs. This cable right here, if you follow it, goes to cruise control. So when you're using cruise control, this motor here pulls this cable to control our throttle about how fast we're going. This one right here goes to our gas pedal. So when you press the gas, it pulls this throttle open, 
controls that throttle plate, how much air is entering the motor. All right, so let's work on getting those two cables off. So this one here kind of wiggles off and snaps off of its place. This one's a little bit more tricky. I take it and it slides out of a slot. I just took them off for demonstration because I'm not going to completely remove this plenum out of the car or upper intake. I'm going to move it and pull it to the side because the fuel injector I need to get at is right there. So hopefully I'll be able to just lift it out of our place. So now I'm going to start taking our intake bolts off. Now this one right there is studded so you would need a deep socket I need a deep eight of course it don't want to fit on there we go so how you guys doing been fishing lately they opened up the trout streams trout fishing has been okay Put a couple, couple good ones. Nothing crazy though. Caught a lot of fish opening day. Probably caught like 40 trout. One good one. One was, one was about 18. Got one today. That was about 15. Car started running really poor today. Sorry, misfiring again. It's nice out, so I don't even have to work in the garage. I figured I'd try to get this done real quick. So, getting these 8 millimeter bolts off. They're pretty long. I don't know if that's a good angle. I'll try to angle over here. Maybe even I got that very back one off. By the way, I'm putting a lot of my bolts inside my air filter box so they don't get lost. Don't want to leave things like laying around so they fall. Those magnetic trays are pretty good to have laying around. They're pretty handy. All right. It's loose. It's loose. You see what's holding it up on the other side. And bracket has a broken bolt on it, huh? Well, I should have enough room to get get at what I need to do, though. Let's see. All right, so this is my lower intake. This is where I'm, all my air flows into my six ports. It's the bottom of the plenum. It's got these little uh, rings. Now, Ford had a huge problem with these rings. They would get dry rotted and hard, and they would cause vacuum leaks when it was cold out. All right, guys, that's enough for this part of the video. I'll see you on part three. All right, guys, we're back. Welcome to part three. Let's show you where we're at. So, these are our fuel injectors. They got two wires. They get pulsed by our computer on and off. Um, on another video, I'll show, I'll show you how they pulse with a what's called a Noid light. First thing I got to do though is relieve fuel pressure. Now Ford is nice enough; they put a little what's called a Schrader valve here, just like on our tire. This way, you can uh, twist on a fuel pressure gauge if you were thinking that you had fuel pressure problems. But you could also just use something tiny to push down in here to relieve any pressure. And this might squirt. Squirting good. A lot of pressure in there. So I'm relieving all my pressure. Making a mess. Gasoline evaporates pretty fast though. All right, so I got rid of all my fuel pressure. I got all over the pump. All right. So now, got uh, this is my number. By the way, 
this is how it goes. I gotta do cylinder number four. That's what my check engine light was for. This is one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm gonna disconnect my fuel injectors. These tend to crack sometimes. So there's a little tab here. I don't know if you can see it. That when I squeeze it, it lifts up. That's what unlocks it. Now there should be a couple eight millimeter bolts. One there, one back there. I have to start unscrewing now. Probably getting busy today. Moving this camera a lot. I use a swivel, a long extension. Oh, what happened? Huh, my socket exploded. Guess that's tight. Here goes that socket. Cracked it. Broke it right in half. Try another one. Get that that doesn't come off. It stays in the valve cover. Maybe I can get it to move to the side so I don't have to have a swivel on it. There we go. It's crazy that my socket cracked. It's a company called SK. Gotta see if they're still in business. Had that socket in a long time, probably 20 years. See if it's under warranty. Yeah, you want to make sure that you don't drop anything down these intake holes. Get something down there, it gets through the intake valve that's between the piston and the head, and you're going to have some big problems. And a lot of people have done that. Even myself made a mistake. I made a lot of mistakes. But when you make mistakes and you never do them again, you can take them as a positive. Alright. I wish I had another swivel. Let me put you guys in a different position so you can see what I'm doing. Right down in there, trying to get that nut off. Kind of a hard angle to get at. I might need, might need some light too, I don't know. You guys can see. bolts that hold the rail down off and now I got to wiggle those injectors out of their holes. Uh, they're basically now just held in there always. I might need a little pry bar to pry up. 
probably do that with my extension. Ooh, there was still fuel in there. I thought I had all that pressure gone. I guess I didn't. crank this motor with the fuel pump disconnected I'm sure I just got some fuel down down that cylinder all right let's talk about this injector a bit. so fuel injector fuel enters here there's usually a screen there creates a spray pattern coming out of here it's an electromagnet there's a needle inside here and when this is energized the needle lifts up fuel sprays out all right and it's done in like uh, millionths of a second so this is what they use to uh, tune motors if they want to make them a little bit more rich the current that goes in here during the pulse that on off cycle they make it either shorter or longer and that makes the needle either stay open or shorter amount of time and that gives us what a, our fuel mixture so that's what they do during tuning they're tuning how long the electromagnet inside this fuel injector is energized. All right, guys. I'll see you in the next video. I got some cleaning up to do. All right, guys. Welcome back. So these are our fuel injectors. These are two old ones. These are two new ones. I shouldn't see. I shouldn't call them new. They're remanufactured, so they rebuilt them. So these two, I have to send back to the parts store, and I get a core charge. I think they charged me nine dollars a piece if I don't bring them back. But we're going to start reinstalling our fuel injectors. So, so if you look, I have these O-rings. These O-rings got to go. This blue part is an O-ring. It's got to go in my hole right here. Got to make sure that this is facing outward. I'll put my other new one in. And when I set it on, I gotta make sure that I get it over the back end. Now, these fuel injectors go right into those holes that are facing um, my intake valve. All right. Oh, dropping stuff. Should have seated in there. All right, my bolt holes are lined up, so I'm seated in. Now, you guys really don't have to watch me put it back together. It's basically just the reverse of what I did. I'm going to wind up bolting my intake manifold back down. Now, if these were dry, I'd be placing my O rings there too, but they seem to be okay. And I'm just going to do everything in reverse order. So uh, I'm going to wind up making sure I put my wires back on. So they just push back into place. And should be good to go. Might have to push those O-rings down a little bit more. But I'll get to them. So basically just make sure everything's pushed into place. And everything's bolted back up. Alright guys, I'll see you in the next video. Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk a little bit about this job. All right, so let's talk about how we could have saved money and what we would have charged a customer. So right off the bat, a customer would have came in complaining about rough idle and uh, check engine light would have been on. So we would have had to charge them a $110 diagnostic fee. Now what I would have done during this diagnostic fee is step one. Step one is to verify the customer's concern. Would have took the car out for a test drive to see if the check engine light was on and if it was running rough at idle. So I would have verified that, and uh, it was. It was running rough at idle, and check engine light was on. Then I would have ran a uh, diagnostic test, checking a code. Got code P0304, which meant cylinder number four misfire. Then I would have went through uh, trying to figure out why it was misfiring at idle. Now I would have hooked up a uh, scan tool and did what was called a fuel injector leak down test. And basically what that is, is your car puts fuel pressure into the rail and it measures how much fuel 
is being dropped out of each cylinder when they turn the injector on. So I would have noticed probably a lot of fuel going through injector number four. And then uh, we would charge the customer for the parts. I got the parts for uh, $25 a piece. So most places they would have doubled that. So they had been 50. So $50 a piece, 100, we're into the job for 210 now. And then we have the labor for doing it. Now this job only took me probably a less than an hour, but most places go to charge for a job like this, at least two and a half hours. So that would have been like, say roughly another 250. This job would have been just under $500. And uh, I did it in my driveway for 50 bucks. All right. So you guys, you should watch these videos and try doing these things yourself. That's why uh, auto shop class is really important. You could uh, learn a lot of stuff that's going to save you money for your whole life. All right, guys. I'll see you at next video.